Uh, let somebody shout hallelujah. Are you ready for the most anticipated event of the year? A garden of worshippers and saints from around the globe coming together with one heart and not one voice to seek the face of the Lord. The Festival of Life Middle East 2016 is here again, live in the United Arab Emirates with the theme, Right Hand of Power. Date is Friday, October 28, 2016. Ministering Pastor E. A. Adebwe, General Overseer, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and other anointed ministers of the Gospel. Venue is the Sheikh Hamdan Sports Complex, Dubai. Transportation will be available at designated points across the UAE to this venue. Get ready for an unprecedented experience of worship and praise. Featuring Nathaniel Basi, Gabriel Iziashi, Funke Akiokun, Tosin B, Michael Akimbala, and other anointed gospel music artists. There is about to be a shift. Uh, let somebody shout hallelujah. Visit festivaloflifemiddleeast.org to register for free now and share our social media updates with your friends and family. Jesus is Lord. Almighty God, we thank you. Ancient of days, we bless your name. The father of all fathers, the one who has been before the mountains who are brought forth, in whose eyes we are all but children, we worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for July. Thank you for August. Thank you for September. Thank you for October. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for the wonderful testimonies. Thank you because you will never put your own people to shame. Thank you because you see answer prayers. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, we commit all the Father, youth. we commit all the youth. All the young adults. All the young those adults. Those who are here. And those who, who are, are here, listening to us all over the world and those who are listening to us all over the world viewing centers, in all the various viewing centers we commit them into your hands we commit them into them. your hands protect them your hands promote them let them be greater than their parents make them mighty vessels unto honor Use them for your glory. Use them to win the world to yourself. And Father, we pray that this night you will save souls. You will heal the sick. You will set the captives free. And all the nations that have been battered by one hurricane or the other. Please, at these difficult moments, visit them. Support them. Strengthen them. Comfort them. And once again, Father, we cry unto you, have mercy on Nigeria. Father, please remember your promise that before this year ends, Things will begin to improve. Father, fulfill your promise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God. 
In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Well, let's be seated except those who are born in the month of October. If you are born in the month of October, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Father, we commit your children born in the month of double grace into your hands. In every area of their lives, let them find double favor with you. Give them double blessings, double promotion, double anointing, double success. And make every one of them mighty vessels unto honor. Give them a new beginning today. A new beginning of joy. A new beginning of success. A new beginning of a closer walk with God. Let it be well with them. And let them serve you double. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. When I became general overseer in 1981, there were some people who had doubts as to whether I was actually chosen by God or there were some manipulations. And so God began to do something that only he can do. Anytime we had a special program, he will make sure that during that program, the first baby that will be born will be a boy. Uh, that one, mathematics cannot handle that one. It is only God. Well, I have good news for you, young adults and youth. Tonight, God gave us in our maternity center here triplets. And they are all boys. Let the boy shout, Praise the Lord. And let the girl shout, Hallelujah. Okay, uh, now uh, I also have another good news for you. The open heavens for the year 2017 is out. Both for the adults and for the teenagers. Uh, so if you want, you can get your own copies tonight. The price remains the same as that of last year um, because the materials used have been in the country before the dollar began to go crazy. So we are not increasing the price. The adult price remains 1,000 naira. The teenage uh, uh, price remains 700 naira. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah for that. I want to thank God for my boys. They all did excellently well tonight. Everything I wrote down in my notes, almost everything, they have already preached. So that makes my job easy. Maybe I will just pray for you and then we'll go home. They did very, very well. All of them did very, very well. But then you know that I'm not only your father, I'm your coach. And uh, even when you have done very, very well, I will still have something to say. 
Uh, so I have something to say. Let me take the choir together, the various choir. Excellent choir, did very good, sang very well, but <laughs> I will keep on complaining until you become world class. The first choir, well, let, let me put it this way. Whenever you are asked to represent your zone in a program like this, this, this kind of program is called an outreach program. And in an outreach program, there are two kind of songs you must sing. One is the one that will wake everybody up. That's the one they call choruses. And the other one is the one that will draw everybody close to God. That's the one we call worship songs. For example, the first choir came forward with a fantastic, dynamic set of choruses. I mean... Where I was sitting there, I was dancing. But then, they didn't follow it up with a song. It was just choruses, dynamic. And I was expecting that if, you, if they gave you 12 minutes to sing, uh, spend six minutes in choruses, the one who would jump and shout. And then give us some four minutes that will draw our hearts closer to God. The second choir came and they began with worship. Beautiful songs, no doubt, talking about commitment to God. Eh, but where are the choruses? So the first one sang choruses. <laughs> Without a song, the second one sang songs without choruses. I think you are getting the point. The third choir balanced it up. That's the choir from the north. They sang choruses and then. They gave us a hymn. Well, the fourth choir, as usual, they did very well, but um, just take note of what I've said. Choruses for a while, then a song to round it up. The preachers, I will also talk generally because they all did very well. The major problem with the preachers is that they were too fast. <laughs> Absolutely too fast. You see, the, 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 there is a difference between uh, those who just come to the stage and, and make a noise and... Uh, no, 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 no. This is a pastoral ministry. The redeemed Christian Church of God is different in the sense that when people leave the church, they must have notes that they will take home so that they can go home and meditate on what they have learned. I'm a fast writer. I had, I have to be, uh, you know, I went to school for some time, you know. Uh -huh. And so when the, when the lecturer is talking, you must write down fast. But these preachers were faster than the lecturers. <laughs> I know I still got quite a lot of points. But there were several that I missed. So next time, preachers, 
please consider those of us who are interested in taking some points home and go more steadily. Copy me, all right? Follow my example. God bless you, my children. You did excellently well. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for all these wonderful boys. And you know what? They all kept to time. Maybe that's why they were running. <laughs> they know I'm clearly interested in timekeeping. So they all kept to time and loaded us with a lot of good stuff. God bless you. Now, next month, by the grace of God, is the last Holy Ghost service of the year. And it's taking place in the new auditorium. And in all the viewing centers all over the world. This place will also be a viewing center. And the theme for next month is Helpers of Destiny. Uh, if you want to miss any Holy Ghost service at all, you shouldn't miss that of November. Because we want to learn about helpers of destiny. And uh, after that one comes the Congress in December, from December 5 to 10. And the theme for this year's con Congress is Complete Restoration. Complete Restoration. All right. Now, so since our wonderful brothers have already done uh, a lot of work. I will be brief, but within this short period of time, about an hour or so, as usual, I'm going to be calling on you to pray. They have defined for us, and most of them read uh, from Second Timothy chapter 2, from verse 19 to 22. So maybe I don't need to bother reading it to you again since they've read it to you again and again. Uh, maybe I need to highlight verse 19 there. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Let and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. There are those who will tell you that once you are born again, you have nothing more to do to get to heaven. That is not true. This passage says, if you are naming the name of the Lord, you have an assignment. What is that first assignment? Depart from iniquity. You cannot say because you are born again you will continue in sin if you continue in sin you will go to hell let me assure you there are a lot of preachers who are not going to heaven but I will see you in heaven I didn't hear your amen because you are going to face your own responsibility and depart from iniquity. And then he says, In a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. And then he says, If a man therefore purge himself, who is to purge the man? I can't hear you. If a man purge himself, you have responsibilities, my son and daughters. Thank God for the grace that saved us. Oh, it is by grace we are saved. But after we have been saved, washed clean in the blood of the Lamb, we are not to just sit down and fold our arms and continue to live a careless life and expect to be in heaven. It is not true. 
the Almighty God expects you to demonstrate the appreciation for His grace by departing from iniquity, by purging yourself of things that are contrary to His will. All right. Now, the, 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 these wonderful children have defined vessels. Somebody gave us a dictionary definition of vessel. He gave us a definition uh, from marine point of view, gave us a definition from biological point of view. I was even waiting for him to give us a definition from engineering point of view. <laughs> Wonderful children. But briefly, a vessel is just an object that transfers a product from the source to the final destination. An object that transfers a product or products from source to final destination. For example, Second Chronicles chapter two, you can read it from verse one to sixteen, Second Chronicles two, verse one to sixteen. When Solomon wanted to build a house of God, the king of Tyre said to him in verse 16 there he said we will cut down wood out of Lebanon and send it to thee in floats by sea to Joppa then you get men to carry the wood from Joppa to Jerusalem the wood was in Lebanon the wood was needed in Jerusalem some men cut the wood down in Lebanon, they send it by float to Joppa. The floats were the vessels, and some men carry the wood from Joppa to Jerusalem. Men can also be vessels, and the two, there are two kinds of uh, vessels mentioned: um, vessels unto honor and vessels unto dishonor. Let's talk in practical sense of the word. In every house, we have all these vessels. One of the vessels, for example, that you find in every house is a dustbin. It's a vessel, but a vessel unto dishonor. It's a vessel that carries the refuse from the house to the dunghill or to wherever you are going to uh, deal with it. And that one should tell you one thing straight away you must not be a dustbin. Because several years ago, we had a house help. It doesn't matter who ate, whatever is left over, she will help you consume. So, my children, and you know, children can be funny. The children named her dustbin. What's a dustbin? A dustbin is that which is always receiving. Always receiving. Never giving. Tell your neighbor, don't be a dustbin. And then, of course, we, we can then look at other kind of verses. You have cutleries. You have drinking cups. You have forks and so on and so forth. A fork is a vessel unto honor. It picks the food from the plate and transfers it to the mouth where the food is needed. A cup is a vessel unto honor. It takes the water or the tea from where it is produced and take it to the mouth where it will be sent down into the stomach. So now they said in a great house there are many verses that tells you one thing straight away. Many are called but few are chosen. Matthew 22 verse 14. Matthew 22 verse 14. Many are called. We are many here. But when it comes to verses unto honor, 
May you be counted among them in Jesus' name. And then to be chosen in the text, they say the priority is cleanliness. The vessel must be clean. Thank God the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sins. First John chapter 1 verse 7. First John 1 verse 7. But the passage tells us that the cleanliness we are talking about must be beyond the ordinary. A man must purge himself. To purge means to cleanse within. Whatever is inside that should not be there must be vomited out. That's the meaning of purge. In other words, the vessel that the master is going to use will not only be clean on the outside, it must be clean inside also. Clean inside, clean outside. It is cleanliness beyond the ordinary. Clean in words, clean in thoughts. Not just clean in deeds, because it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Absolutely clean. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27, Ephesians 5 verse 27, that Christ is coming back for a church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Completely clean. And he said, ready for good works. Ready for good works. A vessel is an object that serves. He doesn't serve himself. He serves the master. When you go through all the verses, you will find that they all, at one time or the other, served. Samuel served Eli. Moses served Jethro. Joshua served Moses. Elisha served Elijah. David served King Saul. Philip served as a deacon, serving tables. The one major characteristic of a vessel unto honor is that it must have a servant spirit. The greatest vessel unto honor of all is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, I have not come to be served, but to serve. A vessel unto honor must serve. So if you want to be a vessel unto honor, and you don't want to be a servant, you don't want to serve, you are far from being one. Now, Let me quickly then go on to the benefits of being a vessel unto honor. That's because my children have covered all, almost all the grounds. And they, they, some of them mention some of these benefits. I just want to highlight them. Uh, just emphasize some of them. And to help us to pray. If you consider the table is set the master is seated the vessels on to honor are on the table the cup, the knife the forks but of course you know we are talking about human beings now like one of our boys pointed out because that passage said if a man purge himself so the vessels on to honor we are talking about is uh, a human being. The master we are referring to is the Almighty God. The table is set. The vessels unto the honor 
are there on the table. What is the first thing? What is the first benefit of being a vessel unto honor? The number one benefit is that the vessel unto honor hears the conversation of the master. He's sitting down there quietly on the table. It's, it's a cup or a plate or a knife. And the master is sitting down. Maybe he's talking to the angels or so. And he's hearing. Versus unto the honor, do hear the words of the master. Exodus 3, for example. Verse 1 to 8. Exodus 3, verse 1 to 8. Long before Israel knew what was happening, God has spoken to Moses. Moses, I have seen the sufferings of my people. I'm about to do something concerning it. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 8, Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 8, Joshua was alone when God was speaking to him. Joshua, eh, the work that Moses did not finish, you are the one. Who will finish it? First King chapter 18 verse 1 First King chapter 18 verse 1 When there have been uh, When there have been no rain For years God spoke to Elijah And said alright now I'm about to send rain To the earth Second King chapter seven verse one to eleven. Second King seven verse one to eleven. Situation were horrible in Samaria. Women were already eating their children. God spoke to Elisha and said, "All right, within twenty-four hours, the tide will turn." And I believe that's a message for Nigeria in Jesus' name. <laughs> now the point is that. God is always speaking. It's only verses unto honor who can hear him. Because when he speaks, he speaks in small, still voice. I remember the first time I attended a, a fellowship meeting at the University of Lagos. We've been worshiping God, everything been going fine. And then all of a sudden, everything became silent. And then one brother began to prophesy, Thus said the Lord. And he went on and on. And, and, and I, I nudged the man who took me there. I said, when did God say that? I said, I didn't hear anything. He said, shut up, God is speaking. God was speaking. One man was hearing. <laughs> and I was there, I wasn't hearing anything at all. Versus unto honor, they hear from God. The Bible says God won't do a thing without telling his servant the prophets. I pray that God will open your ears <laughs> and you begin to hear from him. <laughs> One of my sons is here tonight, uh, and I'm happy that he's here. Bishop Francis Waleoke is here with us. Way back in 1979, December 24, 2 p.m. in the afternoon, God spoke to him and gave him a word of prophecy for me. And he wrote it down. He just wrote it down as God told him. And he brought it to me. Ew, I mean, 1979, you know how young he must be then. So those of you who are young adults, he, he was in his uh, 20s, because he's only 60 now. And he brought it to me. As soon as I saw it, I knew it is from God. As soon as I read through, I knew this is from God. So I sat down and broke it down to pieces, you know. As a mathematician, I love to analyze. And I saw in that message that he brought to me 28 promises of God for my future. Do you know that today, out of the 28, 
27 of them had been fulfilled. That's what I'm talking about when I say hearing from God. So I'm not talking about those prophets who will stand up and say, Hey, thus said the Lord, it will rain tomorrow. Ah, it is rainy season. prophet if I look into the sky and I see the cloud I know rain is coming I'm talking about hearing deep secrets of God I give you another example some years ago there were two people contesting to be president of Nigeria Abiola and uh, Tafa I think Tafa Tafa thank you and we had a meeting we had a meeting of uh, Pentecostal uh, preachers uh, somewhere in Lagos. And they were all saying, well, now we have two Muslims contesting. Uh, which of the two are we going to vote for? Finally, they turned to me. They said, you are not saying anything. I said, well, I want to hear from you, the elders. He said, okay, what is it that you have to say? I said, neither of them will be president. And they looked at me, they said, what kind of uh, prophecy is that? I mean, when you throw a coin up, it has, it has to be either head or tail. There are only two of them. One of them must be. But I heard from God. And I've heard from God tonight. That is going to be well with somebody here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. You know, the Lord asked me to tell somebody here, He said, Before the end of the year, you will know that I have not forgotten you. So I want you to stand on your feet. You're going to pray prayer now. Lift your voice to him and say, Father, I will be a vessel unto honor. Please open my ears. Open my ears. Open my ears, Lord. Oh, Lord. Open my ears. I want to be hearing from you. I want to be hearing from you. Open my ears, Lord, so I can be hearing from you. Open my ears, Lord, so that I can be hearing from you. Open my ears. Open my ears. I will be a vessel unto honor, Lord. Just please open my ears so that I too can hear from you. Open my ears, Lord. Open my ears. Open my ears. So that I can be hearing from you. I too want to be hearing. I want, so that nobody will be able to deceive me. No fake prophet will be able to deceive me. Open my ears, Lord. I, I will also be a vessel unto honor. I want to be hearing from you. I want to be hearing from you. Open my ears, Daddy. I will be a vessel unto honor. I will be a vessel unto honor. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please, let's be seated. The second benefit of being a vessel unto honor is that every vessel unto honor will from time to time feel the master's touch. If the master is going to drink water 
from the cup. He has to carry the cup before he can drink from it. The touch of the master. And you know from scriptures that whenever God touches anything at all, a miracle will happen. When he touches five loaves of bread and two fishes, what happened? <laughs> Tremendous multiplication. When he touches the incurable, the incurable will become cured. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 4. Matthew 8, verse 1 to 4. A leper came unto him and said, I know you can make me clean. He said, Okay, I'm willing. He touched him and he became completely whole. In Matthew 18, verse 14 to 15, Matthew 8, rather, Matthew 8, verse 14 to 15, Matthew 8, 14 to 15, the Bible says Jesus came into uh, Peter's house and saw the, the mother-in-law sick of fever. A moment he touched her, she was completely healed. And then see what happened? As soon as she was healed, she began to minister to Jesus Christ. Verse one to her now. Probably one of the major reasons why some people have not been healed is that God is wondering, if I heal you, of what use will you be? Maybe if you make up your mind tonight that God from now on, I will serve you, your healing will come. Because it will touch you. And he does not need the hand of any human being to do it. Even while you are sitting down there, he can come and touch you. I've shared my testimony with you before. Before I became born again, I had malaria every two, two weeks. It was regular. And it was very painful to me because... I was a sportsman. <clears throat> so when I became born again, the, my first cry to him is, God, heal me and I will serve you. And he healed me immediately. And I'm talking of more than 40 years now. I've had two challenges or so since then. But it has nothing to do with fever. I've never had fever since I prayed that prayer. Heal me and I will serve you. And he healed me. And today, by the grace of God, at 74, I am as strong as I was at 40. You don't believe me, ask those young men who try to go on a walk with me. Uh, usually they will wait for me and say, when you are returning, we'll be waiting here for you. On the average, I do eight kilometers a day. You know, that's on the average. When I have real opportunity to really stretch out, I can go 16 kilometers, I can go more. 24. That's not bad. I want you to stand on your feet and say, Father, touch me today. And just make me completely whole. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. I will be a vessel unto honor. Touch me, Lord. Touch me. Touch me today. Touch me and make me completely whole. Everything that is not of God in me, flush it out. Every ache, every pain. Eh? Just make me completely whole. Touch me, O oh Lord. Touch me, Lord, and make me completely whole. Touch me and make me completely, completely whole. Touch me and make me completely whole. Yes, touch me, Father. 
and make me completely whole. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Please be seated. When I was 60 years old, one of my daughters, who is an optician, said, Daddy, by now, uh, come into my office. Let me test your eyes so I can give you glasses. I smiled. Please don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with using glasses. I'm sure God knew in advance that people will need glasses. That's why he positioned two ears to carry the glasses. Uh, he, he knew in advance. So there's nothing wrong in using glasses. Don't misunderstand me. All I'm saying is that when I say touch me, in those, some, way back in 1970-something, he didn't just touch me to heal me of malaria. He touched my entire body. That's why, by the grace of God, I'm 74 and I'm still reading without glasses. And I'm going to be like this till I see him in glory. He will touch you tonight. Let me hear your amen loud and clear. Thank you, Father. Mm. Oh, I wish I were younger. Because Daddy says, one of the greatest sons of Africa will be conceived this month. <laughs> yeah, I had the testimony of that sister. She said, ah, just when God restored my menses, they asked my husband to come to the village to come and bury. <laughs> yeah, he said, what kind of joke is this? Husband, come back, Joe. And let's say, uh, after that prophecy, if I were younger, I would have said to my wife, how now? <laughs> let somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. The Lord said, Joseph had one breakthrough that fulfilled all his dreams. He said, there's someone here tonight. He's going to give you one breakthrough that will fulfill all your dreams. Let me continue. Uh, <laughs> I said, one, a vessel unto honor hears the voice of the master. A vessel unto honor feels the touch of the master. Do you know that some of the vessels unto honor even touch the mouth of the master? They get a kiss from the master. In Numbers chapter 12, verse 6 to 8, Numbers 12, verse 6 to 8, God said, If there is any prophet among you, I may talk to him in dreams and visions of the night. He said, But my servant Moses is not like that. I talk to him mouth to mouth. You say, what are you saying, Daddy? Are you saying it is possible for a man to kiss God? I don't want to go to too much details. I have told you before that there are testimonies that I don't even dare to share. Because if I share them, you won't believe me anyway, so let's just forget them. But a kiss is a show of exceptional love. 
In John chapter 13, verse 21 to 26, John 13, verse 21 to 26, the Bible says the disciples were with the Lord during the Last Supper. Oh, thank you, Father. And then he asked me to tell someone, he said, relax. He said, I am the almighty God. I will take care of you. Oh, well. <laughs> The boys have done the preaching, so maybe a day will come. I've told you before, a day will come, the boys will do the preaching, and I will just come, prophesy once or twice, pray for you, and we'll go home. Maybe God is getting ready for that time, uh, getting us ready for that time. Because the Lord asked me to tell someone here, he said, the pain is gone. And it won't return in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, in John 13, verse 21 to 26, John 13, verse 21 to 26, the Lord was eating with his disciples, and uh, Jesus said, one of you will, will betray me. And they were all asking, which of us, which of us? There were 12 of them with the Lord. But even among them, they knew that, yes, we are all close to him, but somebody is closer than others. Peter beckoned to John and said, ask him. If he won't tell anybody else, he will tell you. Exceptional love. And Jesus said, well, um, don't let me mention the name of the fellow. I will take a bit of bread, put it in the stew, and I put it in the traitor's mouth. The Lord was sitting down with 12 of his disciples and himself and just one were talking in codes. Exceptional love. I know if I say God loves me more than you, you will retaliate and say, hey, no, sir, he loves me more than you. No problem. Don't let us argue. <laughs> but God knows who are his favorites. How many favorites of God are here? <laughs> well, let your hallelujah show that you are a favorite of God. No, no, and I will tell you a story. This one is easy to believe. There are some that are difficult to believe. I went to Canada for the first time in my life way back in 1970-something to attend the World Conference of Applied Mathematicians. And then during our break time, one evening, they took us to government farm to go and show us how big their cows are and so on. And then they did a, a barbecue for us. And the farm was beautiful. The weather was fairly nice. The sun was shining, but it was still a bit cold. And I, I, I took my food and I walked into the field. The field was green. And I wanted to sit down and just enjoy a quiet time. But there was this white man who had been there when I gave my own paper, when I presented my paper. And he followed me. So when I got there, I bent down and I touched the grass. I wanted to sit, but it was very cold. Ah! So I quickly changed my mind about sitting down. And this one my white man turned to me and said, you want to sit down? I said, yes, but the grass is cold. And he removed his jacket, spread it on the floor. I said, sit down. I said, ah, no, sir. And I heard God speak. 
My son, sit down. You are a son of the Most High. A white man removed his jacket, spread it on the floor for a black man to sit on. And God was watching why that was happening. <laughs> God loves somebody more than other people. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to him and say, Father, make me your favorite. Open your mouth and cry unto him. Make me your favorite. I want you to love me with an exceptional love. Make me your favorite. Make me your favorite. Make me your favorite, Lord. I, I, I would love to feel your kiss. I would love to enjoy your exceptional love. I don't just want to be an ordinary verse one to one. I want to be your favorite, oh Lord. I want to be your favorite. I want you to treat me special. I want you to treat me special, Lord. Special, Lord. Special, Lord. I want you to please treat me as special. I want to be your favorite. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Now, the fourth thing about a verse one to honor of the benefits is special protection. Like uh, one of my boys mentioned that one. You see, <laughs> even in my own little family, I have my own plate that is reserved for me. I have my own drinking cup. I have my knife. I have my fork. I can eat with anything, but nobody can eat with my own. Special protection. Not, not, not anybody can just come and grab my fork and grab my... This is for daddy. I pray that from tonight on, what the devil will know, this fellow is for God. The elders have a saying. They said the reason you don't toy with the albino is because it's considered special to the deity. That's a rough translation I can give to it in English. In Yoruba, they say, Oh, well, the salam When you say an albino, you say, Witches don't touch albino. Because they say this one belongs to the deity. I pray that from today onward, demons will see you and say, eh, This one belongs to God. Special protection. And I've just given one example quickly because of time. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 17. Second Kings 6, verse 8 to 17. A, a king sent an army to go and arrest Elisha. A whole army to arrest just one man. <laughs> vessels are different from vessels. And when the servant of the, of the man of God woke up in the morning and came out and saw that they were surrounded by an army, he came back and said, my master, what shall we do? We are in trouble. The master said, relax, man. 
those who are with us are more than those who are with them. The young boy says, Sir, maybe you don't know what we are talking about. There are only two of us. It doesn't matter the way I do the counting, either one, two, or two, one. Two of us. Outside there, there is an army. Man of God said, God, please open his eyes. And when God opened his eyes, he saw that Elisha was surrounded by horses and chariots of fire. I could go out there and say, <laughs> You want to fight? Come. I'm praying for every one of you who will become a vessel unto honor that from now on, horses of fire, chariot of fire, will surround you wherever you go. <laughs> Special protection. I've just returned from the U.S. where we went to hold some Holy Ghost services. And I'm sure they're all listening to me now. And I had a testimony. We finished in one town, and we were going to the other town. And when we were holding the Holy Ghost service in the second town, they, they brought the testimony of what happened in the first town. One of the boys who was at the Holy Ghost service there traveled shortly after that in a bus. They, they were going to, to play in another town. And they got to a place where they got down to rest and so on. And then, by the time they were to go back to the bus, somebody had gone to sit where he was sitting, beside uh, the driver. So he came in and said, ah, why are you taking my seat? Go to your seat. That one said, hey, don't, don't bother me. This is where I'm going to sit. And if you know boys, they can fight over something like that. But this boy is my boy. He knows his father is a gentleman. So rather than fight, he said, okay. He picked his bag and he went to go and sit at the back. Few minutes later, the boss had an accident. And the driver and the boy who took his seat died instantly. Special protection. When you are a vessel unto honor, when God sees danger coming, he will relocate you. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, Keep me safe forever. Open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Special protection. Special security. For those who are vessels unto honor. Special, special. Special protection. Special security. Father, just keep me safe forever. I will be a vessel unto honor. That's what I want to be. I want to be a vessel unto honor. I want to serve you all the days of my life. I want to be a vessel unto honor. Thank you, Father. Keep me safe. Relocate me so that evil will not be able to touch me. Just move me out of the way of trouble. Lord, move me out of the way of trouble. I will be a vessel unto honor. I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you forever. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I'm, I'm about to round up now. And the fifth thing, which I'm sure one of the boys also mentioned, because of this special protection, 
the verse one to honor gets divine preservation. Because not just any dick and hurry can touch the verse one to honor. The verse one to honor is preserved. Preserved. May Deuteronomy 34 verse 7, Deuteronomy 34 verse 7 says that even at the age of seven of 120, Moses was still vigorously alive. Even at 120. Joshua 14, verse 6 to 13. Joshua 14, verse 6 to 13. The Bible tells us that at 85, Caleb was still saying to Joshua, Give me this mountain. Now that's preservation. At 85, he was still strong. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. 2 Kings 2, verse 9 to 12. Elijah didn't even taste death. <laughs> because it's such a valuable verse one to honor in God's hand. God just sent his chariot to take him home. Preservation. Many of you know Papa. Papa Okeo. I met him shortly after he became born again. He came to see me here at the camp. And he said, sir, I'm going to be 84 in two weeks' time. And I met a prophet 40 years ago who told me everything that will happen to me in detail. How many houses I will build, what job I will do to prosper, etc., etc. But then he told me that at the age of 84, I will die. Everything he said had come to pass. So I'm going to be 84 in two weeks' time. I've come to this holy ground. I want to finish it here. I just want you to pray for me to prepare me for heaven. I laughed. I said, Sir, you're born again now? He said, Yes. Are you ready to serve God? He said, of course, now <laughs> I've committed my life to serving him. I said, then you are not going to die. He said, ah, you don't know this prophet. He said, this prophet really knew what he was talking about. I said, Papa, by the grace of God, there's a greater prophet here. You are ready to serve my God? He will preserve you. That was when he was going to be 84. When Papa was almost 100, he sent for me. I said, I've done enough. I want to go now. And release me. Preservation. If God knows that you are determined to be a service, a, a vessel unto honor, you are determined to serve him with all you have with all you are with your influence with your connections with everything he will preserve you vessels unto honor don't die before their time stand on your feet and cry to the almighty god and say father i will be a vessel unto honor preserve me Preserve me, preserve me. Open your mouth and talk to the Almighty God. Preserve me, O oh Lord. Preserve me. Preserve me. Oh yes, Father, preserve me. Preserve me. I will be a vessel unto honor. I will be a vessel unto honor. Preserve me, Lord. Keep death away from me. Keep sickness away from me. Preserve me, O Lord. Keep accidents away from me. Preserve me, my Father and my God. I will be a vessel unto honor. Preserve me, my Father and my God. Preserve me. Preserve me. 
preserve me. I will be a vessel unto honor. Preserve me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Let me conclude. Thank you, Father. The Lord said, There's someone here. As the message has been going on, you are contemplating doing something for God. He asked me to tell you, Go ahead and do it, and I will reward you sevenfold. Thank you, Father. Now, let me say amen to this before I tell you. Because the Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said, as the season is changing, new doors will begin to open unto you. Okay. Well, the Lord said there's someone here tonight. He said between now and December, he's going to give you five major breakthroughs. <laughs> and he said the purpose is for the work of his kingdom. So he's going to share it with you 50-50. As you go along, take note of that. That is important. Now, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to this very carefully. I know it's for someone very special to God. The Almighty God says, I have reversed the irreversible before. And I'm going to do it again specifically for you. Huh? I want to conclude and he's speaking, what can I do? The Lord said, Elisha was a vessel unto honor. He woke up one morning and he was an object of mockery. His colleagues were mocking him. Do you know your master is going today? Uh, daddy's son, daddy's son, do you know that uh, <laughs> uh, that is going to end today? But before the day was over, all those who were mocking him were bowing down before him. The Lord asked me to tell someone, your day of rejoicing is at hand. Okay, so now let's conclude. Like we said at the very beginning, the number one qualification of a vessel unto honor is that it must be clean. Clean inside, clean outside. Clean. Absolutely clean. So if you are here and you are not yet born again, you can't be a vessel unto honor covered in sin. You cannot be a backslider and be a vessel unto honor. It's not going to happen. God does not use dirty things. And I've shared this, this, this story with you, with some of you before. There is this young lady at the University of Lagos who had been praying, God, you 
use me. Use me for your glory. Lord, use me. I want to be used to heal the sick, to cast out demons. I want to be used. Uh, and, then, and God didn't say a word. Then one day the girl was feeling highly pressed. She wanted to use the loo, the toilet. And at that time, for one reason or the other, there was acute water shortage at the campus. So all the toilets were <laughs> piled up, if you know what I mean. And she was pressed. She wanted to use the toilet. She opened the first one. Oh, God. She quickly closed the door. Second one. Ah, it was worse. Quickly closed the door. Finally, she left the toilet. And then God spoke to her. I said, my daughter? Ah, yes, Lord. I thought you want to use the toilet. Yes, Lord. Why are you not using the toilet? Oh, it's too dirty, Lord. And the Lord said, I too want to use you, but you are too dirty. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, come now. There's still power in the blood to wash you clean. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all sins. I'm going to count from one, hmm, some of you are very far away, from one to 15. Before I say 15, make sure you are already standing before me. You cannot be used if you are still in sin. So, if you want to be clean so that you can become a vessel unto honor, come quickly now as I'm counting. One. Two. And as you come, begin to pray, begin to cry to the Almighty God. Say, I'm coming for salvation. I want you to wash me clean. I want to be free from all my sins so I can become a vessel unto honor. Three. Thank you for those vessels of honor who are clapping for Jesus. Keep clapping. He will keep on using your hands for his glory. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eleven. 
sexual. Thirteen. Fourteen. Now those of you already in front, talk to the Almighty God. Ask Him to have mercy on you. Ask Him to forgive all your sins. Tell Him, I've come to surrender my life to you. I want to be clean so that I can become a vessel unto honor. The rest of you are on the way. Hurry up and continue to pray even as you come. Please, the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these our brothers and sisters and intercede for them. That the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Let's pray for them. Let's pray that the Almighty God will wash them clean and save their soul completely, completely. Completely. And let the counselors please come quickly. They have quite a crowd here, so come and meet them here. Let's intercede for them, brethren, and pray that every one of them will receive genuine salvation today. That the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sins. We wash them clean, absolutely clean tonight. Pray for them. And one or two of you might still be on the way. Hurry up now. Come. Come and be saved. Thank you, Father. Hurry up, those of you on the way. I wait 10 seconds more for you and then I will pray. Just make sure you get there before I finish praying. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to bless your name. I want to give you all glory and honor for your word that has gone forth tonight. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. These people have come to you now, Father. Receive them in Jesus' name. Please save their souls tonight. Let your blood wash away their sins. Please write their names in the book of life. And from now on, Father, let them serve you alone. Don't let them go back into sin. And anytime they cry unto you from now on, please answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, those of you in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Congratulations. Uh, I'm rejoicing with you because from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer request. The counselors will give you some cards now, which I want you to fill very of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the lawyers in our legal team, they are all here from all over the country. 
and I want them to come to the altar. I want to pray for them. Uh, let all the, all the members of our Liga team begin to come to the altar now. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for, for lawyers who are vessels unto honor. A vessels unto honor in God's hands. Thank you, Father. And stretch your hands towards this vessels unto honor and just wish them well pray for them they are the people serving God through the redeemed peace and church of God in legal matters please pray for them that they will succeed pray for them that they won't fail pray for them that God will keep them secure it will protect them from all evil that it will preserve them. 
the Almighty God, who is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, will, will reward them. That God will reward them much more than any human being can do. Pray for them. Pray that all their needs will be met. Pray that this day will mark a turning point for the better in their profession, in their families, in everything that has to do with them. Pray that they will never lack. Pray that they will be healthy, they will be strong. God will keep evil far away from them. Please intercede for them for just one more minute. Intercede for all of them. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, I just want to bless your holy name. I want to bless your holy name for making me such a blessed man. Look at sons and daughters who are lawyers, who are quietly lifting up our hands in their own way, serving you, Lord God Almighty, so that we will suffer no harm. I thank you on their behalf. I thank you on my own behalf. I thank you on behalf of the redeemed Christian Church of God. I say, Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I join my voice to the voices of all the members of the congregation. And I say, concerning every one of you here in the legal department, it shall be well with you. Receive anointing for success. Amen. You will never know failure again. Amen. You won't know sorrow. Amen. You will not know disappointment. Amen. You will excel. Amen. My father will promote you. Amen. He will protect you. Amen. He will keep evil far away from you. Amen. There will only be shouts of joy coming from your home. And you will serve God to the end. Everything you need to make your joyful, receive it right now. Even before the end of this month, in all your homes, there will be shouts of joy. And in the kingdom of God, you will not be missing. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, learned gentlemen and learned ladies. It will be well with you. Keep the flag flying, and God will continue to protect you and bless you. All right. Is anyone here tonight who has been blessed? Let me hear you shout a big hallelujah. Okay, very quickly, let us thank the Almighty God for what he has done and so that we can be on our way very soon. Now, let all workers remember it's a compulsory workers' meeting in November, Holy Ghost service. So, if any worker is listening by uh, the internet or you are watching on a, from a viewing center November you are expected to be here all workers we have a short meeting after the Holy Ghost service of November now let's quickly get our Thanksgiving offering ready and as usual with tremendous joy in our heart if you are believing God that even as the season is changing, doors will begin to open unto you, then let's get ready to give God a beautiful thanksgiving offering and let's do it dancing, 
rejoicing, showing him we appreciate him for what he had done today. We go to the nearest basket to you and drop your offering. Over to you, Ben. something special you want God to do for you in the month of October go ahead and ask him now you have two minutes to tell him specifically what you want him to do for you particularly now that you have decided to be a vessel unto honor something special in the month of October Thank you, Father.
same fear of God. Thank you, Father. Let's begin to bring our prayers to a close. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In that name that's above every other name, that which you have asked for, receive it in Jesus' name. Even before you get home today, have your testimony in Jesus' name. That which the Almighty God alone can do, receive it right now in Jesus' name. And those things you should have asked for that you didn't even remember, receive it also in Jesus' name. The Lord will bless your offering. He will sanctify it and use it for his glory. And you will never lack again in Jesus' name. By the next time we meet, your testimony will be complete in Jesus' name. And you too, you will serve the Lord forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let me hear somebody shout a big hallelujah. As a vessel unto honor, you will tell everybody about Jesus Christ. If you are going to be a real vessel unto honor, let me hear you shout hallelujah. God bless you. Go in peace. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Are you ready for the most anticipated event of the year? A garden of worshippers and saints from around the globe coming together with one heart and with one voice to seek the face of the Lord. The Festival of Life Middle East 2016 is here again, live in the United Arab Emirates, with the theme, Right Hand of Power. Date is Friday, October 28, 2016. Ministering Pastor E. A. Adeboye, General Overseer, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and other anointed ministers of the Gospel. Venue is the Sheikh Hamdan Sports Complex, Dubai. Transportation will be available at designated points across the UAE to this venue. Get ready for an unprecedented experience of worship and praise. Featuring Nathaniel Bassi, Gabriel Iziashi, Funke Akiokun, Tosin B, Michael Akimbala, and other anointed gospel music artists. There is about to be a shift. Hey, let somebody shout hallelujah. Visit festivaloflifemiddleeast.org to register for free now and share our social media updates with your friends and family. Jesus is Lord.